Hi guys, my name is Uyunuga Peter. There's a reason I'm here. This is the only place I can get silence, like absolute Okay, let's do this again. So, we're going to be learning the basics of animation. Why did I do with sound effect? We're going to be learning the basics of animation today. And my favorite software for animation is Adobe After Effects. There are a couple of other softwares that you can use. But today, we're jumping into After Effects and we're going to... Slay this thing. Slay this thing. We're gonna. We're gonna. Let's just go and do it. All right. So as soon as you open the application, Adobe After Effects, which is what I'm using, you have this interface. Welcome to After Effects. New project. Open project. Obviously, you want to click a new project. And then we have this. But don't be afraid. This is looking. The first time I opened it myself, it was looking very complicated, but I'm just going to run you through um, what each panel does. So right here we have the project panel. Um, this is where you import every asset that you want to work with, your videos, your sound, your images, um, assets from other applications and whatnot. Right next to it you have effects control. We're going to talk about this in a moment. And right here we have the composition panel. This is where all your footage, whatever you're working on, while you're doing the effect, while you're making changes, it appears right here. You can see exactly what you're doing, you know, while making progress. Now, if you jump all the way to my right, we have some other tabs. We have the preview. It's not going to function now until we start working on something. We have effects and presets. What happens here is, you know, just search for whatever effect, you know, you want to use. And then here we have character. This is for text. To you know work on your text and all that and here we have a line just as the word says anchor point mover we'll talk about that in a bit paragraph text blah 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 well and a bunch of other stuff so i think what we should do right now is just create something but before i jump into that i just want to let you know that animation is the process of moving images pictures or creating stuff and making them appear as if they are moving it's as basic as, as that moving something from one point to the other or changing the shape of something just you know manipulating pictures manipulating images to make them appear as though they are moving so what we want to begin with first here is to create a new composition and you can do that by either going to this tab that says composition new composition or within the project panel you can click this icon and if we do that you can see you know some settings for the comp you want to create so we have the name of the comp let's just name this new comp and then you can select you know the preset for the um, um, tv aspect ratio you can edit dimensions you know the pixels frame rate you can choose whatever you want and let's make this a five second Click OK. You can also select the color of the composition. Let's just go back to composition settings and you can select the color right here. So you can make it red, whatever you want to do, white, blue, green, whatever. And let's make it black. OK. And OK. So right here we have our new comp opened and obviously there's nothing inside. But what we want to do is to fill this up with stuff that we want to work on and we can play this back to see what we've done if i play this right now using spacebar nothing is happening here because we obviously don't have anything in it so what we're going to do right now is create let's start with a shape a basic shape like i said earlier we're doing the basics of animation i'm not going into any complicated stuff i'm not going into any complex stuff and we have just a short time to do that so if you want to create a shape you can do this by clicking this icon which is a rectangle tool if you hold your click on it you can see other options that says rounded rectangle ellipse tool polygon star tool i wouldn't want to go into all these details but using one of these you know you can it, it goes across board for all of them you can still do the same you know effects and all that so let's start with the rectangle tool when you click this you can just draw a shape on your 
screen. This is not a perfect square. Let's make this a perfect square. Let me undo that. All right, now let's do a small square. All right, so now remember this align tab. We use this to position our items in the middle of the screen. So depending on the part of the screen you want to position them, you know, just click any of these things. And then our anchor point mover. This thing right here, this icon right here, is called the anchor point. Now, anchor point is the point in any shape where if any change is made to that shape or element, for example, rotation, it rotates around that thing. For example, let's do a simple rotation. We have an icon here for rotation. When you click that, you have the rotation icon, the rotation tool, and you can use this to so because the anchor point is sitting right here, we can use this to move this around the anchor point. So this is what we're going to do now. Bring everything back to the center. We change the anchor point to the middle of the shape. Now if you rotate, it rotates in the middle. All right. So let me just run you through a couple of tools and icons and so you can know exactly what you know they are used for. I have a really, really short time. I just want to make this very quick. So. All the way here you have home home this takes you all the way back to the previous you know opening screen where you have a new project and you know open a project this is your selection tool this is the select of select objects let me click on that right now uses to select objects move them select layers you know and all that stuff and this is your hand tool this you know shortcut page this allows you to move the entire screen in case you want to focus on something you know you do you do that and we have the zoom tool you know basically when you hold on it you can zoom in or when you hold alt you can zoom out let's center that back and then you have the rotation tool the camera tool turn behind tool pen tool text tool as time goes on, you'll see the usefulness of all these tools. But since we are doing the basics, let me just be quick, really, really quick about this. All right, so in our shape layer, if we twirl down this arrow, you see some transform options. Now, this is where all the animation, shape changing movements take place. Right here, you can see anchor point. It has numbers on the X axis and on the Y axis. So when you see numbers like that, like this, most of the time is X, Y, and if there's a third set of numbers, it's Z. But we're not going into that today, we're just doing X and Y. Then we have position. If you mess with this, you see it moves on the X, and if you mess with that, you see it moves on the Y. And then we have scale. Playing around with this increases it, you know, uniformly. But if you click on this constraint proportion button to turn it off, you can increase on only the X or increase on only the Y. All right, let's do this. So we have rotation. Basically, we talked about this before. And then we have opacity. Opacity is technically, you know, reducing the brightness or reducing the appearance of an image. So if I do this all the way down to zero, it disappears. And if I bring it back up to 100, you know, it appears. So you can actually use this for revealing stuff, anything that is sitting behind any certain layer. Now, for the most part, I think the most important um, thing or the most important icon that you should be very familiar with as far as animation goes is this stopwatch looking icon right here. It is used for keyframing and basically keyframing is creating certain information for your layers at different points in time. So let me just show you an example. So for example, we have the position. If we have the position of this shape sitting all the way to the left and we set a keyframe notice when you click on this stopwatch icon this turns blue and there's another blue diamond looking shape that appears right here on the timeline and let's say we move the timeline all the way down here and then move either move by doing this or by moving it on the x axis right here let's move it all the way to the right we just created another keyframe so what this is doing is at this point in time it has registered this information that this shape layer is on the left and on the other point in time 
it has registered this another set of information which is all these numbers that the shape is on the right side now surprisingly if you play this back this is what you get okay trust me i can end this class right now because you just created an animation but since we have some more time let me play around with some other stuff so we have a keyframe just right here and we'll play this back we have another keyframe and it stops now the reason it stops here because there is no other keyframe to change the information from this now if we have to put another keyframe somewhere and let's say we move this up right here by the time we play this back we have moves here and then moves all the way there now that is animation that is the simplest form of animation now by the time it gets more experience in animation then you tend to you do more complicated manipulations more complicated keyframes you know and all that stuff now let's do some something you know something extra on this shape here we have the scale property and we have the rotation property for example let's create a keyframe for the rotation and move all the way to the other keyframe to set a new keyframe now for the rotation i want this to rotate just one time and i'm going to type one in there but if i want it to rotate for say you know 90 degrees or 180 degrees all i need to do is type in the number here but if i want to do 360 degrees i just need to type in one because that's one 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 rotation now if we play this back we we'll see that the shape is rotating yes beautiful the shape is rotating and to create some more you know slight effect let's reduce the scale so as it as it moves from point a to point b it reduces in size so in the first keyframe we had it set at 100 and in this keyframe we should have it set at zero so when we play this back this is what we have and boom let's see that again and boom and let's say we want to mess around with the opacity create a keyframe and move all the way to the next keyframe and let's drop the opacity down to let's say 50 50 when we play this back this is all we have so you can see that as it moves down the opacity reduces as well as the scale it rotates and it moves to one side of the, of the frame now let's say for example we don't want it to move in a straight line we want it to move in a curved line now when you click on any of the properties down here some extra features will you know pop up on the composition on the composition panel now for the position you notice that a path is shown here for the position a path is shown and this path can be you know edited in such a way that you know it can change its trajectory or you know its um, its shape so to speak and on this path we have some two handles that you can mess around with to create what you want so let's say we want this guy to move in a semicircular trajectory and if we play this back this is what we see and uh, it gets down okay i don't like the way this thing is disappearing so we're just going to leave it at maybe let's say 50 all right so let's play this again and see what we have it reduces and boom it stops right there now trust me this is all you need to know from this point in time you can actually you know study more explore more mess around with you know a couple of tools around here and you can create stunning visual now before i go i'm just going to do one more one, one more animation and this time i'm going to be working with text so you can you know get an idea of what we are doing so by the way you can you know hide a layer in the comp by clicking this icon right here when you click this it disappears when you click it back it comes it comes right back in 
you can do this maybe you want to you know work on this another layer that is hiding behind that one so you can actually just turn it off and turn it back on here so we're going to work on the text right now and when you click this text tool let's shut this off so that we can work on the text the minute you click on the screen you have an icon you know on the screen where you can type in the text so let's just say we type in text and you can see it's all the way off on the screen so we can actually turn down the transform buttons and bring the position down but an easier way to do that for me is to use the alignment tool and align it into the center and here we have a text so this text has a couple of you know properties you know part options and all that but we can actually change the color of this text by coming to character now this panel is where you do anything that is concerning text now you have an option of changing the font you can select different kinds of font to change to you can increase the size of the text you know you can change the size between if you are working with um, multiple lines you can this is used to you know change the distance between the lines you can also change the distance between the the letters as well shrink them in or you know, bring them out then if you want the text to have a stroke you can increase the stroke you know as well as you know increasing the size of the the height of the text the width of the text and you know so much more making it all caps making it stand alone making it you know um, tilt and all and all that stuff so let's do a simple animation using you know this text so we have this text on the screen and say for example we want to animate the text to appear on the screen in a you know quite stylish way all you have to do is go to the effects and presets you can see animation presets depending on the software you're using i'm sure it will come with you know a bunch of effects and a bunch of transitions that you can use it will go all the way down to text we have animate in or animate out let's work with blurs i like using blurs then we can use um let's say bullet train for example now if you pick this and drag it onto the text layer you see it disappears and the reason it disappears is because of the effect so let's try and play this and see what happens whoa beautiful as easy as that now what this has done is it automatically created two keyframes to animate this text to appear the way it did now this is just a simple way of creating animations by using you know the built-in effects or the built-in plugins that come with your software so you can use this for a reveal or better still if you decide to change the keyframe and take this one all the way to the back it's going to be the opposite of what happened let me undo that so for this text say you want to put some kind of effect like a glow or something you can come all the way to the effects panel and type in glow you see a bunch of options let's stick to this one and drop it on the text as you can see it has affected the text layer so i told you we're going to come back to the effects and controls anytime we drop an effect on a layer the effect itself appears in this effects and controls controls tab and what happens here is you have a bunch of stopwatches that you can use to keyframe certain properties of that effect now in this case of the blue we have threshold you have the radius we have intensity if you mess around with them you find out you discover a, a bunch of you know changes that occur within that effect now for example we type in let's say we type in blur let's use a blur for example let me delete this blur so we have a couple of options for blur but i'll be going with gaussian blur i like using gaussian blur so by the way you can actually you can either drag an effect onto a layer on the comp and um, on the comp panel 
or you can drag it to the layer or you can drag it to the effects and control tab and when you drop it it appears there now say for example we create a keyframe for blurriness you can click on the stopwatch icon right now nothing happens because it's set to zero and when you move it all the way down here we can increase the blurriness till it becomes very blurry and when we play that back this is what we get now you can use this for you know writing names and videos you know if you have seen the premiere pro tutorial i'm sure you know you would have seen a couple of you know effects with text so if we put all of our effects together this is what we have text coming and fades text coming and it fades now let's say you want to you know take this really cool animation you just created and send it to your friend what what are you going to do you have to export it and that means rendering it out of the software and to do that you need to go to composition and click add to render queue the minute you click add to render queue another panel opens up where you have settings and opportunities to you know name the video and all that stuff realize that our new comp is still here but right next to it you have the render queue now if you click on best settings it just gives you a couple of options you know i will advise that you just you know leave it to the default setting except you are quite advanced and then right here you know it's going to tell you whether it's avi mp3 photoshop sequence quick time just to select the format i'm going to leave it on avi and then here is where you select you know the name of the complex just say text animation and you also need to select where you want to save it. So I'm going into projects. Well, let's go that. I'm going into tutorial. And I'll leave it here. I'll export it into the tutorial. So when I click save, all you have to do right now is click render. And when you do that, watch your animation render. Depending on the strength of your system as well, it's gonna run you know either fast or slow. I think we are done. So what we we'll do now is let us go to where we have Peter tutorial and we have our video right here. Yeah, let's play that back and see what happens. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you had no idea about animation and you were able to walk this with me from the beginning all the way to the end, then bravo. You just became an animator but trust me this is where it all begins there's a lot more you need to do so much more that you need to do so if you want to have some more advanced tutorials you know continuing from where you are right now i suggest you go online go on youtube go on vimeo i recommend videocopilot.net i recommend um film riot on youtube but if you just go on youtube and search for you know animation tutorials or the basics of animation you know, beginner tutorials on after effects or software of your choice you definitely find some tutorials that can help you so i think we're good here and i'll see you in the next video anyways it was fun having you guys around and i hope to see you guys soon for more videos it's peter signing out <laughs>